I like when I was performing by myself. I had this, uh, I had this notion in my mind, this story in my mind where I was, uh, I and about three or four kids were on a shanty boat on the Ohio River, and it was flood, and we were just drifting along, and I needed to entertain them, and I had an old. We picked up an old television set out of the current that didn't have a picture tube in it. So we had make-believe television and they'd sit in one end of the boat and we'd put the television set up where they could look through the opening. And then I'd get out on the other end of the boat where they could see me and I would be television. So I thought to myself, okay, this is one my one-man act is to try to go out there and give them all the values that they would get in a regular show. but. As translated into the medium of one man with a banjo and a fiddle, you know, like that, they can dancing. I even, I even tried, I even one time tried to figure out how to, to uh, transform the talk show format into what I do. And I never did quite pull that off, but I, what I was doing was I was doing a thing where I would get a song where I could leave the stage with my wireless microphone and go out into the audience and sing and go over and say, and who are you and where are you from? And then they would sing into the microphone and then we would, I was going to try to get some kind of a dialogue going where I was constantly singing my side of it, which I thought was kind of Did you ever do that? I fun, fun because it was so ridiculous. And I did it a couple of times, but I never quite pulled it off to my own satisfaction. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but that was one kind of a thing. So it's kind of a, uh, there's there's all kind of different things happening when I'm out there with a band or without a band or or uh, just what I'm trying to do, you know. And do you plan the concerts out before you get out there? No, never. Uh, no, I tell you what it is. It's like uh, I, I approach it the same way as I do radio. Uh, it's like uh, you go out and flip a switch, and then it's it's the ongoing cavalcade, and then. I look at the clock and say, oh, it's time to get out of here. So I flip the switch again and it's over. It's like this ongoing thing. And uh, and, and what you do is you go out and cut them off a couple of yards of it. And there it is. Mm -hmm. well, do you have a closing song that you do? If you see, look at the clock and see you got a uh, few minutes left? Not on purpose, but I wind up having closing songs because usually usually there's some really, there's some really good, safe closing songs that you can use, especially if you haven't gone over too well or you haven't really got their attention and you want to go off with a bang, whether there's, there's certain songs that are real safeties. Besides Orange Blossom Special? Oh yeah, Orange Blossom Special and they have to sing along on, uh, on uh, uh, Rolling the Sweet Babies. Or maybe I might try to build them up where I can get them to dance on the encore. And then I always add lib a waltz at the end of that to cool it down. You know, all that kind of stuff. And, and so, in a sense, maybe I build toward that. But uh, uh, like, if I've had a, a a real good concert that has uh, really gone really well, I might not end like that at all because that's that's safe. There's no challenge there. Mm -hmm. I have a tendency. I have a tendency, and it's probably uh, it's probably hindered my. It's not a great career building. Uh, <laughs> Career building move, but I have a tendency to be very experimental in what I do. Once I know I can do something, then I start looking for something else. I guess I get bored easy. Well, one thing I noticed that you do is a lot of performers, uh, myself included, I think, come out there and really try to hit them pretty hard with something during the show. It seems to me, I was watching you at the Merle Fest, you get them to sort of lean in, whereas uh, a rhythm I might choose would be. Da, 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 and you'll be da, 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 da. and so they sort of have to like lean into the music and, and listen up um, rather than you giving them the whole plate full of the dinner in one whack. Yeah. See, I'm not really aware that I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Okay. If I'm doing that, I'm, I'm doing it naturally and unconsciously because it's not some, that's not where my. Uh, point of concentration. Well, also in the rhythm, and the rhythm is sort of, it, a lot of your music is pretty toe-tapping rhythm. Mm -hmm. Not It's not real driving a lot of it, it's kind of mm -hmm. in that rhythm. Do you think about that? Or is it just what you're interested in at that time? Just what I'm in the door at the time. Mm -hmm. 
I never thought about that. I think that's one of the fascinating things. Uh, when I watch you perform, I always am, am aware of that watching the audience's toes tap mm -hmm. and, um, you know, having a, it's kind of a light beat. You're not coming down really heavy on the two and the four. You're just kind of, a, that kind of a, I like a downbeat. You know, well, Mon Monroe's music a lot is on, is on two and four. Mm -hmm. and I like, I like, I like it here on one and three. I like that four four downbeat. Uh huh. Huh. Do you relate, uh, or do you think about it when you go on television? How do you relate to doing a performance on television as opposed to live? Try not to think about it. We found out on the Glenn Campbell show and the Smothers Brothers show that the less you think about it, and the less you put into it, the more natural it is. What do you mean, less you put into it? Uh, well, I'll give you an example. Glenn Campbell always kept a Pinochle game going in the dressing room, and he would, when he actually did his stuff on camera, he would do it like an interruption to the Pinochle game, rather, rather than the other way around. Rather than the Pinochle game being some passive time between takes, that he, he, he worked it out to make the Pinochle game the major thing, and then he would duck out and do that as a as a uh, interruption to it. I try to break down the barrier between the performer and the audience. Like for instance, I remember telling my son one time when he first started working with me, I said, I said, don't hang out in the dressing room, you ain't got no business. The only, the only business you got back in that dressing room is either hang up your coat or do some tuning. I said, I said, I said, when we're between intermission or something like that, I said, you, I said you're wasting your time back there. So go out there and hang out with them. With the audience or the performer? Damn right, and talk to them and find out what they want to hear and what they're liking and, and meet them and stuff like that. So Is he doing that? I guess so, yeah. yeah he's working on it. Oh, he started doing that when he was with me. But I do that, you know, Marie sets a concession stand, so if I'm, I'm either on stage or I go out and sit in the chair by the concession stand. And, uh, uh, and I've tried to break down the barrier between the audience and like like it would be if the audience were in the room here or if we were having a jam session or something. My feeling has always been that, that, that breaking down that uh, barrier is very important and my main, uh, one of my main goals is to give them a reason to care about the music because it's something that's probably strange to them and to give them a reason to care about me too. So I'm no, I don't worry about that. Uh -huh. I, th I think if I start doing that, that they'll think I'm patronizing them and that I will unconsciously patronize them without meaning to. So I don't ever do that. Huh. Yeah. But now, like for instance, I might go out and take tickets. Mm -hmm. Just stand at the front door and take the tickets, just because I like to hear them say, "Well, what are you doing out here?" I say, "Well, here." <laughs> well, ain't that weird? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. And it's I can maybe there's a certain comedic aspect to it that I like too. Yeah. Right. 